This is a path he has called me to serve humanity, to understand the pain when love doesn't work for you, and the partners that you keep attracting are not healthy, and they only use and exploit you. But with that, I understand what is right, what is wrong. I understand the skill sets that we need to create and bring in the healthy, the love, the compassion, the understanding. So it's not through our best experiences that we learn what's right and wrong. It's through our worst experiences on, our, on this planet. What you've just heard is a clip from a conversation with our special guest, whom I'll introduce to you in a few minutes. I just wanted you to get a taste of what is to come. The title of this episode is Divorce and Sexual Trauma, How to Heal and Thrive. But that's not all this episode revolves around, because in this episode, you're going to hear our guest discuss why her marriage of 15 years did not live up to her expectations, especially in wanting to be a mom. You also hear how she fell for a sociopath after her divorce and how he was able to manipulate her. And, you know, I'll just let her tell that story in this episode. You don't want to miss this. And this is episode 69. So stay tuned as we get the show started. Hello and welcome to the Happier Marriage Podcast, a podcast for spouses longing to have a happier marriage so they can feel more connected, desired and supported. Now to start the show, here is your host and Sherpa, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified relationship coach, Kingsley Grant. Just a reminder, the Happier Marriage Podcast is on a mission to make marriage great again. And you're encouraged to join this movement by sharing this podcast with at least one other spouse. And let me say this. You may or may not agree with all that you'll hear. And quite frankly, you may be triggered by some of what you'll hear on this episode. But remember, that's one of the purpose of this show, right? To stir things up and then to take you in for what I call a solid landing. And you can always share your thoughts through making a comment uh, below the uh, in, in the video in the uh, that also follows this podcast or also in wherever you see this posted on social media or through an email. We'd love to hear what your thoughts will be on this episode. This show is brought to you by kingslegrant.com where you'll find resources that are designed to help you in your marital journey. So make sure you avail yourself to go by going to kingslegrant.com and see what's available for you. Our hope is that you'll be challenged, inspired, and encouraged in this episode as in every other episode. Stay tuned. So the big question is this. How is it possible that you have a happier marriage when you feel like you've tried everything? Your spouse isn't making an effort. You're exhausted. You feel like giving up. Or there's so much hurt that's taken place between you and your spouse. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. As stated earlier, we have a guest on the show, and her name is Gianni Adamo. You'll hear her talk about the issues I mentioned as only she can tell it. you also hear her advice at the end of the episode that you don't want to miss. Just to remind you that you can also watch the video version of this interview on my YouTube channel, Kingsley Grant. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any and all the new uh, videos that are posted there. So let me just tell you a little bit about our guest, Gianni Adamo. Now, Gianni is a psychotherapist, author, and a relationship expert. Let me add a best-selling author, Amazon best-selling author. In 2011, one year after her divorce, Gianni founded Fearless Love to help couples create a new legacy where their families can flourish. And in 2018, she authored an Amazon bestseller, From Love Trauma to Fearless Love, Seven Tango Steps 
to breaking free from narcissists and predators. Mm, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? And the book is recognized with a prestigious Kirkus Reviews Recommended Book Award and also received the 2020 New Author of the Year Award by Audiobook Reviewer. Gianni's articles and contributions on relationships and heartbreak appear in your tango.com, Bride, Emerson, Glamour, Psychocentral, Bustle, Amolo, and eHarmony, just to name a few. In her free time, Gianni enjoys traveling and dancing salsa and Argentine tango. So you can find out more about her on her website, fearlesslove.net, and the links will be found in the show notes below. Without further ado, let's welcome Gianni Adamo to the show. Thanks for joining me on the Happier Marriage Secrets podcast, where we are on a mission to make marriages happier again. Today, we have our guest, Gianni Adamo, with us. And Gianni, I'm so glad to have you on the show today. How are you doing? Hi, Kinsley. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Awesome. It's, you know, I've been waiting for this moment. I was looking forward to it. So I'm really um, excited to have you and to discuss some things that I believe will be very helpful to our audience. And one of the ways that we will accomplish our mission, Gianni, is to have you know, people like yourself who will share your story and your expertise to have audience for them to acquire skills and or learn um, from what is shared so that they can have happier and fulfilled marriages. So tell us a little bit about your life as it is now in the context of where, where you are in life and um, how have you gotten here? Okay, so I actually would like to start how I got here, and then I'll tell you what I'm doing. No, no, I, 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 I know that's a very tempting um, um, uh, thing. But I just, oh, you'd rather have me tell you what I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll set the stage of it. <laughs> yeah. So I am a licensed mental health counselor and a certified relationship coach. And I work specifically with the realm of relationships, marriage, couples, love, Anything that has to do with that realm, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I mm. handle. Um, so I work with premarital counseling, couples who are looking to get, and who are either getting engaged or cohabitating and trying to work out their relationship issues and decide the next step for their relationship, as well as for couples who are married and working out the disruptions to their intimacy, their connection, their bond, um, and work out um you know, a new vision for their marriage to flourish. So I work with them on all of that, right. as well as for those individuals who are divorcing or are divorced. I work with them and healing and, and re being able to rebuild their lives right. and have a new li a life vision for themselves, as well as for anyone who's going through or surviving a toxic relationship who's exited right. or is exiting, how to heal, um, yeah. how to understand what happened to them. The understanding the red flags uh, eventually for, you know, future dating <laughs> so they don't get back into that. So would, 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 would it be safe to say, Jenny, that uh, a number of these things you're describing, um, these are professional, I mean, you're speaking about from a professional, um, professional realm, but it sounds like there are some things also that may be coming from personal realm as well too, right? For me, yeah. Yes. This is definitely a life's calling and mission, absolutely. Okay. Um, so so you... What was it? I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm so excited about having this conversation here. So, you know, pardon me if I kind of jump in here and now and then. What was it that led you to decide that this is the thing that you think you should be doing? What led you to this point? Because some people normally have a backstory why they got into it. Like for me, of course, as a, a clinician myself, like yourself, I have certain backstories I've shared on my podcast and interviews and so on. And, and they tend to be the the genesis, right? The beginning of of our where we are today. So, how did you, what led you to decide that this may be the thing you need to do? Are your calling, your mission, and what you do, why you do so well? Right. So this started many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years ago. I had been in a long-term marriage, and for 10 years out of the 15 years I was married, we saw couples counseling. We saw all sorts of support and help from professionals, medical um, de personal development gurus, the whole nine yards. Um, and the marriage did end up in divorce. <laughs> Although we sought so much help. 
Um, so here's the thing. My ex-husband and I considered each other best friends. Mm. So I ended up divorced um, and ended up with a lot of resentment towards the industry, not understanding what happened. Why did we invest so much money? And again, we considered each other best friends. And like, why wasn't anyone able to diagnose us properly? Why didn't anyone really provide us a path forward or at least an understanding onto why we truly were stuck? Mm. In the meantime, I decided I would get back to school and get my my graduate degree so I can move into this field so that I could, I was still married at the time. So I could ultimately, my desire was to help us um, and then ultimately help other couples. What I unearthed there was that I was a codependent partner. So I, okay. So I knew like I needed to deal with my codependency. Um, what was Mr. Pain. What what was it that led you to to come to the place of saying uh, you're because some people hear the word many times codependency and they they have this all this kind of visuals all this kind of things and oh that's codependency that's codependency and sometimes you know it's really an overused terms so I wonder when you say that there was a codependency on your part what was it the things you were doing that would say this was codependent in in um your behavior yeah. The biggest red flag for me about me being the codependent partner was that I had a an agenda for my marriage and I had an agenda for my husband that he did not necessarily share. Even though that agenda was all about love, right? And restoration. And <laughs> well, you had to walk. <laughs> Yeah, but I had an agenda and I'm like, we're going to get this done and we're going to get on the right path and we're going to, you know, get this marriage on track. He wasn't on that track. He thought everything was honky dory. He thought the problem was me. <laughs> of course, we're the problem. Yeah. And the other one's like, everything's great. So he was on the everything's great. You've got, you know, you've got an emotional disturbance. You've got the problem. Of course. So I realized uh, while I was in school, okay, so I'm codependent and I'm trying to drag somebody through life. Mm. Yeah. My agenda is, yeah, we want to have a better relationship and a better place um, for us to grow our family. But that's, that wasn't his agenda. Um, so that wasn't what he wanted. And so I started to go through the a healing journey for myself as I went through my education but we still, or I still focus on couples therapy instead of individual therapy. And I would say that's actually my biggest regret while I was married, that all of my investment with, you know, like the healing, um, paying people to help us was more on the marriage side versus just helping me and getting through my depression and my anxiety and my emotional deregulation. Because all that pain of disconnection in our marriage was causing me to become depressed and anxious and emotionally deregulated. Mm -hmm. So I should have just, being that he, we were not on the same page um, on what the problems were, I should have gotten my own individual therapy while I was married. But I did that's, very point, that's a very important point you're making, I think, because I think so many people you know, as, as married couples, they forget that they also as, are, are individual and they have, they're bringing issues to the table. And sometimes they may not need to look in the mirror and say, maybe we're possibly, you know, could there be something that I... And bringing over here in our relationship. So let me ask this question, um, Gianni, before you uh, keep unpacking those issues you're describing. Um, where did you get your information about marriage? Because you had an agenda about what marriage should look like. I wonder, what informed you about what marriage should look like? Where did that come from for you about how marriage should look and how you were hoping that would be in your own personal relationship? Um, I think there's multiple areas that comes from, from it comes from, you know, I'm Latina, I am Christian, so therefore I see I have a Judeo-Christian value system that marriage is between, you know, two people and they ultimately, hopefully, if they're still young, if they're getting married while they're young, they might want to grow family because <laughs> I was 25 and I wanted children, yeah. you know, eventually, not at 25, right. I was at a career <laughs> path. So, you know, so I wanted children. I wanted um, to be in a marriage that we would grow between beyond a party of two. And that necessarily was not my ex-husband's agenda. He wanted a life partner. Uh, he wanted someone who would be a companion to him, that we would travel together, um, that we would, you know, live and share responsibilities in a home together. But growing beyond the party of two was not his agenda. 
Mm-hmm. It was my. Mm-hmm. So you were the most hum- a lot of humanity. So you had two different ideas about what marriage was. So you come in. So was that something that you knew ahead um, before you got married that he made have this sort of, a different idea of marriage, and you had a different idea, or that you discovered that after you got married? How did that come about? That's a great question. Um, we talked about all of that. The situation was that I wasn't ready and neither was he. At age 25, I was not ready for a family. And he was a, he's a little older, but he wasn't ready, even though he was in his 30s. Um, so I then, by 29, became fully ready to become a mom, and he never did. And so that started. But our issues started even before that, but that was one of the issues that broke us. We were emotionally, um, no, like, my what I discovered was that he once I went through school and went through the divorce, then I was able to understand what his diagnosis was besides mine. <laughs> like I have to do this too. And he, he, my ex husband, um, he's he's technically he's like a good person, but he was born with developmental issues that led him to have a personality disorder. So he has a um, obsessive compulsive personality disorder. He also is on the spectrum, most likely on the autistic side, um, even though that's been removed from our vocabulary. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and he also had and still does have high narcissistic traits because being born with so many issues, he had to be in self-preservation. So mm-hmm. he was in, ca- in, ca- uh, in, 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 um, in a capsule. And, but he was a sweet person and he didn't mean anything harm towards humanity or me or anybody so you know you see all the goodness inside of these individuals and you love them as they are but mm-hmm. they're stuff that don't jive so we were very disconnected emotionally and intimately um our intimacy was also quite dysfunctional mm-hmm. so all those things were hurting us even before my desire and need to have babies mm-hmm. um then so now like that just was the icing on the cake <laughs> that like what, 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 what were some of the things that you did that he, uh, he did that you would say this was narcissistic in in um you know in his behavior and and what did you try to do when you were experiencing them to either manage or you know how did you you know co- cope how did you get through those moments so what are the things he did because I, I hear this very often right uh, a spouse may say my husband or my wife is very narcissistic and I'm saying okay tell me more about what does that mean because that word can be overused and abused and thrown around every day today everybody is narcissistic right so. I wonder for you, what was your experience in your relationship with your husband that you would say these were narcissistic behavior? What was he doing and how did you um, kind of um, survive that? Okay. Back then, we weren't using that term. So I, right. I could remember I, post-divorce that I can now label yes. properly what I was dealing with. Right. So when I was married, that vocabulary was not even available to us. We were not using that term that much. That came after the elections and all that <laughs> in the last like decade. Yes, and I've been divorced for more than a decade. Mm. So okay, so um, he lived in a bubble, in a really secure little mm-hmm. bubble for himself, and I was outside of that bubble, even though he loved me and put me on a pedestal. So when he loved me, he showed me his love through his own lenses. He could not move through his lenses and to mine, such as like the five love languages. And we learned that, hey, we have to offer love to our partner in the way they receive love, Mm -hmm. right? So that was one of the cues that I was getting, like there's something's wrong here. I don't, he's so sweet. He's such a nice person, but there's something wrong here. He doesn't seem to understand me. Um, it doesn't matter how I speak or how I ask or how I describe what my needs are. He doesn't seem to understand beyond a certain level. So intellectually, we're good. But anything mm-hmm. below the neck point, like <laughs> complete disconnection. Mm-hmm. So my, I could have, it would have been easier for me to throw myself against the wall and get a better response from the wall than I, <laughs> I would from him. And I'm just yeah. And when you're dealing with someone who's actually sweet and nice and doesn't respond to you and doesn't get you, it is actually more like more of a a torment because Mm -hmm. you can't put your finger on why is it's happening. It was a very torment. Like it was 15 years of emotional torment, if you ask me. Wow. I can imagine how frustrating that must have been because you're trying to connect with him. He is, uh, you know, he's sweet and nice, but also um, not knowing how to do that. Did you find any kind of controlling element because if he's not necessarily, can I give him back to you what you're hoping to get? 
Um, the, and he has an all, his, his own agenda. What was his, his agenda like for you? Because it sounds to me that your your attempt was to connect with him. He either showed his inability um, or not the capacity to do so, but you were still trying to. Like you just said, for example, throw this up against a wall might be get a better response. So um, did you find in his in his own actions, were there anything that came from him that was controlling in, in or in a mood? You know, what are the things that caused you to think, you know, wait, something may be off here. I can't put my finger on it, but something might be off here. Yeah. Um, I pointed this out to him multiple times that he was passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. That was something that I did bring up to him. But he didn't understand that that was the way he learned to cope with life. Mm -hmm. Um, So to him, that was the appropriate way of handling things instead of just being straightforward, honest, um, genuine, authentic about things. He would rather be passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. So that was something that I would say, hey, you know, he would, I could see it, especially with most other people. I didn't see it as much when it came towards me. I only saw it later as the divorce situation was flaring. But while you're in it, you don't, don't see it that way. You only see it when it's happening to other people. Mm. And this is such a very important point you're making. I, I find though sometimes in, in your work as a, you know, a clinician, you also probably hear these stories where a, a spouse may come, or a couple may show up and, and a finger pointing, right? And they're simply saying that, you know, my husband or my wife don't get me, or um, they feel like they are, they're like frustrated. They're, they're talking to a wall, or sometimes they feel like the person wants to make sure that they, um, they're bent and they become like them. They're trying to make them over to somebody else. And that's going to be frustrating. So what was it that led you to the point of saying this marriage or, or him to say this marriage is probably not going to work? And how did that end uh, where the conclusion was made? Like, you know what? A divorce might be best for us. So after 15 years of marriage and 10 years out of the last 10 years out of the 15, we're in and out of therapy and different um, specialists. Uh, my need for having a family, my need for emotional and sexual intimacy were so great um, that it divided us. At that point, um, the romantic love that I had for him was had disappeared. I loved him more as a family member, like a brother. Um, it was no longer that romantic love. It really evaporated. Um, so at that point, I'm like, I'd rather just keep him as a friend and a husband because to me, this was not functioning as a husband and wife team anymore. It never, you know, it. I kept trying to find ways to fix it and it wasn't fixable. We did not want the same things. I finally had to surrender my agenda with him which is to create this intimate relationship with him that was not possible, um, at least with the means that we had at that time. I wonder today, now that we, I think, are more clear on these symptoms on adult men, um, because back then these symptoms, I mean, these um, like the diagnosis weren't really made, but I think this is like 20 years later, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, today I think we're better at diagnosing these problems in adult men. And so I think now that if we're better at diagnosing and now we have better treatments because we know we can support a lot of this stuff today. But back then we didn't have it. So I'm wondering if all if I had been married 10 years later versus 10 years prior, if that would have made a big difference. So that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, it's true. So how did your faith play that? Because, I mean, did you feel like, um, you know, you got married, you believe that God brought you together um, at, at that stage of life and. And as you mentioned, that kind of uh, shaped your your view of marriage. Was there anything that about your faith that either got robbed or you felt, you know, what did you feel about God and you and the relationship and how things are going and how it's ending up? Did that in any way um, kind of rot your faith? Okay, so I've been a Christian since I was a child. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I have like a childlike faith, meaning not like it's not mature because it is, yes. but meaning when I came to the Lord, the Lord spoke to my heart and said I had a calling. So I believed that. So I know God is real. He speaks mm-hmm. to my heart, right? So as a child, you're like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> so you don't question it. Like you're like, yeah. this is that. This is God. So when I went through the difficulties in my marriage and started dealing with depression, started dealing with all this anxiety, uh, 
the Lord spoke to me again. And, and I felt like the Lord made it clear that this was my path, that this was the calling that I had. So at that time, I thought that the Lord was going to heal my marriage and that both of us would be on this track together to restoring other relationships and being like a power couple who can be on stage because the two of us have no problems and speaking in public and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. I thought that was God's plan. <laughs> well, we have one idea and God has another. Mm -hmm. God's plan for me was not that. It was for me to go through the disheartening, um, the this whole chaotic world when we go through a divorce is very chaotic. We have to figure out who we are on our own without our life partner that we, um, you know, most of us who got married in our 20s, we grew up with our partners. So I had to unravel who Gianni really was on my own after that divorce. Then comes another relationship. The next relationship is me involved with a sweet and charming sociopath. Oh boy, I got, it only got better after my divorce when I got into the traumatic experiences. Mm. So through that whole journey, I had to depend on the Lord, trust that his word to me was on point, that I had a purpose, that I had a calling, and that this journey that I'm on is part of that purpose and calling. So I, I didn't question the Lord. I tried to stay humble, and I did get angry at times because I'm like, well, if, if this is my calling, why are you making it so difficult for me? It has been a very difficult journey for me. Yeah. And yet this is a path he has called me to serve humanity, to understand the pain when love doesn't work for you. And the partners that you keep attracting are not healthy and they only use and exploit you. But with that, I understand what is right, what is wrong. I understand the skill sets that we need to create and bring in the healthy, the love, the compassion, the understanding. So it's not through our best experiences that we learn what's right and wrong. It's through our worst experiences on, our, on this planet. So God has redeemed all of that for me. And he has continued to use me very greatly with my clients because um, God knows I love my job and my clients adore me. Um, I have really great results with my clients. And it's because I have such heart and such depth and such wisdom because of the trials and tribulations and the pain and the suffering that I myself have had to go through. Wow. Jenna, thank you for sharing that with us. I really appreciate that. Um, I can hear the, the pain, but also the redemptive power of God being able to say, okay, Jenny, I still have a work for you to do. I still have a purpose for you. And um, out of your, your pain and your ashes that God can create beauty. And that's what he does, right? And we know that, um, that you know, at night there's weeping that endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So God has used all of that and really have led you to not only to work with your clients today, but also to write a very a best selling book. And God has so he redeemed all of that and said, Gianni, I have a plan still. You know, I have a still have a plan for you. And so that book came out of your pain and is now reaching a lot of people around the world, basically. Tell us a little bit about that. What was it for you that you began to say, I need to put this in writing? And what is the book, the, the main objective of the book that you have written? And the name as well, too. Okay. So I wrote From Love Trauma to Fearless Love, Seven Tango Steps for Breaking Free from Narcissists and Predators. And that became an Amazon bestseller, and it's received uh, various awards including the new author of the year 2020 by audiobook reviewer. When I really Congratulations. Book. Thank you. So after my divorce, I moved to South Florida and I became a, the target of a sweet and charming sociopath. Um, I was not into him. I did not care for him. I ran uh, like any smart girl would. Um, but he knew how to chase. And so ultimately he was able to trigger my chemistry. And once my chemistry was triggered, you know, the rest is history because now we think we're in love and we're going to try to make it work and, and whatever. So the relationship ended with me being ultimately um, ended up with sexual trauma. And therefore 
and he abandoned the relationship it, and that relationship lasted about a, almost a year and a half. Um, so he abandoned the relationship. I ended up with sexual trauma. And so I needed to go through my healing journey. So as I went through my healing journey, one of the things that I did was I signed up for writing a book in eight weeks. Not that you would write a book in eight weeks, but at least you would get it started in eight weeks. And I knew it was time for me to sit down and write a book. A book. I wasn't sure what kind of book I was going to write at the time. It was either going to be a self-help book for couples, communication, intimacy, whatever, um, a memoir, or some sort of like fiction, fantasy. I wasn't sure, but those were the three things I was looking at. The instructor said, don't worry about it, because I'm like, I don't know what to do. She's like, don't worry about it. You just start writing, and then it will all sort itself out. And that's exactly what happened. I started writing. Um, and then the story, the story started to unfold. Um, I started to use uh, things from my past, things from the present moment, things that were interesting to me. I fabricated some things. So ultimately, it's a fantasy based on some on some yeah. facts, which is based, usually that's how writers write anyway. We pull things from reality and right. we create stories. Um, so as I wrote this journey, it became a journey of healing for me. I was able to put together the story, my the love story of Elena and Sassad, which ultimately was the love story between myself and this sweet and, sweet and charming sociopath. Um, and then I was able to look at where did this relationship come from? What was underneath? What were the traumas that allowed me to have still chemistry with a man like this? Um, so ultimately, what that book was, it was this powerful book to help me to be set free from the transgenerational traumas and, and curses and and things that come through our genealogy and our DNA and our family heritage. So I was able to clear these traumas and break that cycle of me having a, any kind of vulnerabilities to these sociopathic narcissistic individuals that are only interested in exploiting and using other people for their for their personal lives and not to edify another human being. So a person who would read that book today, um, um, so who might be the person who would uh, be the uh, the direct, you know, um, recipient of that book? Who would be that person you have in mind who would say, you know, Gianna, I that book sounds fascinating. It sounds very interesting. Why would I want to read that? And who, what might be happening in their lives that they would say, this is a book for me? Anyone breaking free from toxic relationships, anyone who wants to stop being vulnerable to exploitive people, um, anyone who's been through sexual trauma, anyone who's exited or is exiting a relationship with a narcissist, this book is, a, is your journey of healing. It's going to get you on that path. To finally start recognizing what happened to you, what were the pieces that were missed, the red flags that were missed, um, and it's a journey of empowerment and freedom. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I like that. That sounds really, that's really sounds very uh, it, it it piques your interest, right? It's just like, oh man, that sounds like that me. I want to get that book. If someone is here listening today, would like to get a copy of that book, where would they go to to get a copy of that book? The book is on Amazon, and they can either put in my name on Amazon, which is Gianni Adamo, J-I-A-N-N-Y, A-D-A-M-O, or they could put in uh, From Love Trauma to Fearless Love, Seven Tango Steps for Breaking Free from Narcissists and Predators. That's awesome. And those links will be in the description that follows this video. But also... Um... Uh, Gianni, what are you working on today that our audience today might be, you know, not only fascinated with your story, but also you might, um, you mentioned something about having an offer, something that could actually entice them, right? What are some things that you would want to say to them that would really give them a, a nudge to say, hey, you know what, I need to know more? Okay, so as you are aware, I am a licensed mental health counselor and I focus on both individual and couples counseling. And I also offer intensives, and I'm launching couples retreats this fall in 2023. Um, 
So for anyone who's interested in working with me, whether it's through counseling, coaching, the retreats, um, I am offering a free 15-minute consultation, which they can just go on my website, which is fearlesslove.net, and click on the free 15-minute consultation. And there they can just fill out the, um, the information and schedule their own time that works for them. Or they can go to like the back of the website there. There's like a contact form. They can fill that out and ask their questions, especially if they have any questions around the retreat, um, if they have any um, interest in that. In the retreat, what I'm offering there is, is it's going to be for individual couples and families. So it's going to be very, um, it's going to be like a high end experience here in downtown Delray Beach at one of our beautiful hotels one couple or one family at a time, and it's going to be highly curated to them. Um, and it's just going to be my team and the client, the, the family or the or the couple. And is that fearlesslove.net, you said, right? That's correct, fearlesslove.net. And uh, of course, I'll have the link in um, you know available to in the description that follows this episode. So as those of you are listening, um, watching this video, make sure you check the link. You check the description. You'll see the links there. Um, all that Gianni has has mentioned today. Gianni, we're coming to the end of our time, and I, I cannot tell you how much there are so many different things I would love to unpack. And of course, we could take all day to do this. But uh, if people want to follow you and get to know more about you and to see the work you're doing, just in general, I mentioned about the, the website. But is there a social media um, place that you do content or wherever else that they may be able to, to even get to learn more about you? Yes, I am on Facebook under Fearless Love LLC. I'm on LinkedIn under Gianni Adamo. Um, the, I'm on Instagram, but I, it's Instagram for me is more difficult because I write a lot and Instagram yeah. is just like pictures. So it's like a weird situation. I don't yeah. have yet. To, I have a what I have. It's Gianni I, Adamo under Instagram, but I, I feel like I have less of a contact yeah. there. Um, and and I would say if they go on my website and fill in the contact form, I will. Um, that will also help me because we can send put you on the newsletter. And I have uh, newsletters that go out with really great content. I'm a published author. I have lots of articles that have been syndicated in various different locations. So I, I provide quality um, information for you to read um, my blogs and articles to help you with any with your healing journey or re- repairing your relationship wherever you are, my uh, content is really good for that. That's awesome. I really think the fearless love on um, that net and really get in contact with you and just really, yeah, start having an interaction. I think it's a great way to get even more help in their own journey. So I think that's a great um, uh, provision right there. So thank you for sharing that uh, with us. So Jen, as we're kind of wrapping up here, is there any one last thing? I know we covered uh, quite a few things and, and stories and all the different things, but if there's any one last comment, statement, something you would like to leave with our audience, and I may not have asked a question or you may have never had a chance to say, what would that be um, that you would like to leave with us? Yes. Um, what I'd like to leave with the audience is healing is possible. And sometimes healing may look a little bit different than what you had hoped for. Because for me, it looks very different than the journey I thought I was on. The Lord has healed me. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like a rock star inside, like happy, free, empowered. I have love. I have love that goes out to the world, love that comes back to me. And so I feel whole and complete. But yeah, it looks very different than what I had pictured in my 20s and 30s and even my early 40s. Um, And there's one more thing I want to say, and it's we are this this journey of healing sets us free. But what is freedom? Ultimately, our freedom isn't just to do anything and everything willy-nilly, right? Because people who do all of that end up with other diagnoses, such as addicts, <laughs> narcissists, yeah. because they have no filters. They just yeah. keep on doing this thing, and that thing is destroying their lives. So our freedom is to ultimately, when we have this level of healing and freedom, is free to be our authentic selves and be able to give and receive love in the way we're designed. That's what freedom is all about. So when we go through this level of healing, it's for freedom, but the freedom is to be restored back to our authentic ability to love and be loved. 
Mm. Wow. That's really a, a deep, and I think it was very important that you said that. So I appreciate you uh, wrapping up with that piece. And GNA, I would say thank you so very much for taking the time to be here with us on the on the show, because I think that this is going to be very helpful from a personal and a professional level here. And somebody who have lived the life, somebody who has gone through it, it's not like you have just, you know, is a, a theory or this is just a book knowledge. This is personal, but also, of course, the book knowledge has come alongside and give you a deeper insight and to help people. So I want to say thank you for taking the time to be with us today and to deposit in so much information. And for you who are listening, remember that make sure you contact um, Gianni at fearlesslove.net. And also you can, um, if you need, a, if you have a question to ask, and when this, when you're watching this, just make a comment in the comment section and she'll also see that there and can respond to your comment as well. So thank you for taking the time to, to listen and to watch. And Jenny, thank you for being here and God bless you. And um, you really have, in service to him, done the job he's called you to do. So thank you. Thank you so much, Kinsley. It's such a joy. And this morning I woke up so happy knowing that I would be on your show. So thank you so much for having me. Amen. It's, it's, it's mutual. Thank you so much. And there you have it, my friends. I hope you got a lot from this episode. Make sure you connect with Gianni on her website, as she mentioned in this episode. If you found value in this episode, make sure you leave a rating and a review to help this show get more visibility. I thank you for that as well. And if you haven't yet taken the Happier Marriage Assessment to gauge how your marriage is doing and what you can do to make it even better, I want to encourage you to do so at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz, happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz. So thanks again for listening. And here's our announcer. We've come to the end of another exciting show. And if you enjoyed this podcast, one, make sure you give this show a rating and review. Two, subscribe to the show to get all new releases. And three, get your complimentary copy of the five secrets to a happier marriage ebook at kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. Again, it's kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. See the link in the show notes. Do it today. Don't delay. Thanks so much for listening and make sure you tell one other spouse about this show or better yet, share it with them. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you his peace both now and forever.